Recently, a cracking discovery was made in the field of Tolkien scholarship. A secret appendix wedged between the pages of certain editions of Lord of the Rings. And there is one particularly cryptic and divisive passage. It reads, In a channel on YouTube, there lived the Bard. Not a nasty, dirty clip channel filled with bits of film and a boozy smell, nor yet a dry, bare, sandy channel with nothing in it to thumbs down on or watch. This was a bardic channel, and that means reboxings. Now, scholars have argued the importance of this passage, but I, among many others, have decided that it is a signal for us to rebox the finest MMO in the South Farthing. Lord of the Rings Online. And what are we waiting for? Lord of the Rings Online, or Lotro, as it is known to the wise, is my very favourite MMO, even over games like Warhammer Online. And this in spite of the fact that I never got to the highest levels of Lotro and I never tried any of the raids. Indeed, I played less than half of it, half as much as it deserved. But I do love it very dearly, and I think the lion's share of the reason why I feel this way is in the game's wonderful representation of Middle Earth. And yes, there's many quibbles to be found along the way, especially if you're a purist. But all these niggles and complaints are simply reduced to ash as you walk through the Shire or as you enter the Valley of Rivendell. This game has a magic to it and a majesty and it was made with a love that seems vanishingly rare in the realm of computer games. And I commend this game to you as a result. Try it for yourself sometime. It's free now, after all. But today we are reboxing the Collector's Edition. And this is an interesting Collector's Edition because this is a post-launch Collector's Edition. Indeed, this one was made to tie in with the release of its first expansion, The Mines of Moria. So let us delve both deeply and greedily into this fine Collector's Edition and see what it's all about. This collector's edition of Lord of the Rings Online has a particularly lovely box, which I think is supposed to represent the famous Red Book of Westmarch, and it does so in a style that is very consistent with the art style used within the game itself. And you'll notice that there is no Mines of Moria branding on the front here. This isn't a Mines of Moria collector's edition. This is a collector's edition of Lord of the Rings Online as a whole, and not one of the expansion itself, although it does include the expansion. Most of the detail on the box has its texture bossed on there, so you can run your fingers across these lovely runes that occupy some of the free spaces thereon. And it follows through to the back as well. Good! The box fastens itself shut with a cunningly concealed magnet in the lid here. Very handy for those of us who get a little bit cavalier when taking things out and putting things back in. And within the box, we find that most of the space is in fact taken up by this cardboard insert. So it could have been a bit thinner, but I think it was made thicker for presentation purposes, and that's all right with me. Naturally, this edition comes with a manual, characterised here as a starter guide, and presented in lovely full colour, which is a nice change from what we usually get in these things. Now, I found there is actually a difference between a manual and a starter guide, as this focuses almost entirely on the first-timer's experience, and it excises a lot of the other stuff that you usually find in manuals, and it's a lot stronger for it. Yeah, nice change. There we are, starter guide and pamphlet full of long-expired buddy keys, which we don't need to look at. The game discs are presented in this simple but effective slipcase, which opens up to display a dramatic battle scene deep in Moria. A taste of things to come, no doubt. Actually, no doubt. I, I do know. This happens. It's part of the game. Game discs are starting to become redundant now too, aren't they? Least among the edition's trinketies is this Mines of Moria poster, which I don't think is good enough to put on my wall. Oh, it's alright, but this Balrog looks naff. There. Now, while this isn't a Mines of Moria collector's edition specifically, it does have a very strong Moria bias. It was the latest thing at the time, after all. Lotro comes with not one, but two maps. The first of which will look very familiar. Yes, it's the classic map of Middle-earth. Now, as you might expect, Lotro doesn't make use of the entire landscape, but more and more areas have been added to the game as they've become relevant. Helm's Deep is particularly fun, although personally I'm kind of saddened that we're unlikely to ever visit places like the Lonely Mountain or the Iron Hills, 
Ah, well. The second map is a lovely cloth map, and ah, this takes me back to a time when many RPGs would have such a thing included as standard. A lot of people comment on this, but I think relatively few really understand why that was done. It wasn't because developers were more generous, it was because there wasn't enough disk space back then to have maps in the game. This map features the Mines of Muria, which was added in the expansion, and it is just the maps drawn directly from the game and obscured with giant letters. But honestly, it's hard to fault the presentation. It does look rather nice, even if it's not particularly useful. Maps of paper and cloth. Now this I can see finding its way onto someone's wall. It does have a very attractive quality to it. Instead of having a soundtrack and an art book as separate, complete entities, the Lord of the Rings Online gives us a music and art collection. Now what this is, is a small and stylish showcase of some of the music and some of the art involved with the game. The soundtrack is located in the rear of this little volume, and as you can see, it is limited to tracks added for the Mines of Moria expansion, and that's okay, because Lord of the Rings Online has an unusually robust soundtrack. I don't think the complete thing has ever been released. And I know that it has several tracks that were also used in Dungeons and Dragons Online, which is another very good game. Much of the art is very good, I think, and well displayed, despite not being as big as I would like due to the smaller format. Sadly, some of the images are just too small and dark to be done justice in this volume. Like this picture of Gandalf facing off against the Balrog. That is an absolutely incredible image. I love it. And that should have been on the poster. I like the game's version of Gollum as well, although I seem to recall some fellows complaining that it was a little too close to movie Gollum for their liking. Well, the game does sometimes sail close to the famous films now and then, but for my part, this version of Gollum is as valid a step from movie Gollum as movie Gollum is from, say, Alan Lee's Gollum. None of which are a patch on my personal favourite Gollum, the one drawn by 17-year-old Jimmy Corty in 1976 as part of this incredible poster, which has since become an immortal part of the visual heritage of Middle Earth. Aye, it's been my favourite bit of Middle Earth artwork since I was about 10 years old, and I trust all of you have got it hanging up at home as well, for as we all know, it's the only surefire way to ward off the enraged ghost of Tolkien. Last, but far from least, is this edition's crowning trinket. Here in this black bag. And no, it's not dice in a bag this time. This one contains a shining replica of the ring. The trinket about which much calamity revolves. Here's a closer look for you at this lovely trinket. A northerner I met once claimed that it was a little too small, but I think it's just about the right size for a Shire-born ring bearer. Don't you? Whatever the case, it is a really lovely little trinket. Much better than I would have expected from a collector's edition such as this, which, as much as I love it, doesn't really distinguish itself all that strongly from other collector's editions of the age. Matter of fact, it does seem a real shame to rebox this, but uh, that's what we do in these lands. There, Lord of the Rings Online Collector's Edition reboxed. Ring and all, which is now secret and safe. Wait. No, it isn't. It's in my pocket. <laughs>